I don't usually go in for the whole tips and tricks thing, um, but I saw a video today that I thought was interesting but could use some extra information. Um, so I thought I would tell you about it while I'm making some coffee. So I saw somebody post today something really interesting and compelling, which is there's a legend that you should um, put a pad on the output of your microphone so that you can turn the gain on the preamp up higher. And, um, and this, you know, according to the legend, will uh, give you more of the preamp sound. But there's, a, there's some important context to this. Now, two things can be happening when you turn up the gain knob on your mic pre. Number one is that uh, the gain could actually be changing, like the, the circuits could actually be making more amplification. This is true in some API preamps, but not all. And most modern preamps, like um, the built-in preamps in your interface or um, chip preamps or things like that. Um, but in earlier style Neve preamps, the gain is actually fixed in a gain stage and what you're doing is adjusting an attenuator. So on, on a Neve 1073, when you are turning up gain, you are just lessening an input pad to a gain stage. And this is where it actually gets really important and interesting is that there's a certain threshold you cross on an original style design, which is not copied in every clone you see out there, only the originals and some clones do this. Um, when you click into the higher gains, you actually switch in a whole second amplifier card. So there's a second 283 amplifier card that comes in at higher gains, which means you're going through another whole um, Neve amplifier card. So um, that means that if you put a pad on the output of the microphone so that you can click into that second gain card, now suddenly you're going through twice the amount of circuitry. And if what you're trying to get is the sound of that circuit, you've effectively doubled it. The other thing that's really important to remember about the mic pre-topology is that um, <clears throat> like a, a Neve BA283 card is just sitting there making the same amount of gain all the time and you're just padding the input to it or switching a second one in. And so that card is essentially making the same amount of noise and the same amount of distortion that it was always going to make. And, those, and the distortion is only going to go up if you hit it and the noise is only going to go down if you have a relatively higher input signal. But this isn't always true on variable gain mic pre's because the actual circuit in there can make more gain so it can be, create more of its own noise and, and, and it can create more of its own distortion um, independently in a different way. And that's why like hitting fixed gain mic pre's and varying the pad, um, it sounds different than, than hitting a mic pre hard that has a variable gain circuit. They, they don't behave in exactly the same way when you hit them hard and when you adjust the input attenuator. So you have to know which one you're working with and you have to develop your own, um, your own taste for each because they don't work the same. And then the last part of the myth that I think is really cool is that a lot of these tips and tricks, you know, come from just things that engineers would pass around um, in the, back in the day. And so another interesting thing that would happen is on certain old API consoles, the line inputs that you're feeding from your recorder when you go to mix um, may bypass the input transformer um, or may go through a different input transformer that sounds a little different. The thing that, that caught my memory when I saw this video about the trick was that mixing on an old API desk, a lot of times what we would do is come out the line outputs of the tape machine and instead of going into the line inputs of the console like you're supposed to, you would go and get 16 or 24 line input pads and pad the output from the tape machine so that you could hit the mic pre because the mic pre circuitry was different than the line input circuitry and also had more gain so you could um, you could ride closer to that sweet spot where you're getting a little saturation out of the transformer but not necessarily clipping the circuit which is harder to do on the line input because on those the line input is a fixed gain so whatever's coming out of the tape is going line input at line level to the card and you don't get the little uh, gain adjustment knob on the preamp. You know, it's important to understand the relationship of where these components are to each other because on, on some mic pre's, the pad might be before the input transformer. On some mic pre's, the pad might be after the input transformer. If you're doing what this person suggests and using an external pad or padding it at the microphone, if you have a condenser mic that has a pad on it, that's definitely going to be before the input transformer. Um, and then that relates to whether or not the circuit is actually making more gain or if you're just un unpadding an attenuator and whether that in attenuator is before or after the input transformer. You know, this idea that there's a quick answer or there's a yes or no answer. And um, 
And that's not really true. And I think it's always important to understand the context and understand as much as you can about the equipment you're using. Because the reason that sometimes there seems like there's inconsistency or mythology to different tips and tricks is often because different pieces of gear work differently. So like the same trick that's going to get the best sound out of a 1073 isn't going to get the best sound out of the Focusrite preamp that's built into your... Um, interface. Maximizing the input signal to the preamp that does not create more distortion than you were looking for is always the best way to do it because you're maximizing your signal to noise and signal to noise is like the, the quiet fight that we all have to fight as hard as we can. So anyway, um, I don't post a lot of tips and tricks so you don't need to follow me for more tips and tricks. You really only need to follow me if you like um, coffee or guitar pedals. I, I love to talk about it personally so if you want to if you have any questions you can hit me up.